Um, my title is the Ataeshi of Ikate land in the Lekki environs of Lagos, Nigeria. And that particular title um, I got about four years ago. And Ataeshi means um, someone that um, also looks after community as regards arts and culture. And um, I, I think the, the uh, decided to give me a title based on some of the things they believe I've done for arts and culture in Nigeria. And I was very grateful to the Oba, um, Elegusi, for doing that. And then um, before that, over about 2009, I became the Adolo of Emu Kingdom in Edo State. That is the chieftaincy that I said that um, on the Gazette uh, paper, there had never been a female Adolo in the history of Edo State. It's a title they never gave to female, and obviously there had been a lot of contestant people who don't believe that it should be female wise. I, I think otherwise, obviously as a female, I believe it's capable, a woman is capable of doing. And it's not a difficult job. It's just saying the truth and trying to lead your people or advise, because you're actually working for the people. You're a servant of the people. It's not that you're lording over people. I'm an advisor. And they, they, there are issues that come up even in my tenure now that I've made my advice and I've not been listened to. I think it's wrong, but then obviously I have to take the will of the people because this if they want me again to advise, I'll come back again and I'll advise. But I have advised, I have not been listened to, things are done. But uh, particularly, I'll continue to advise on this particular issue because it's the issue of conservation, burning of our forest, killing of medicinal plants. I'm advising it to stop. I'm advising awareness. So I now feel that, okay, maybe another approach I should use is more... Uh, what do you call it, um, using the social media more now, more of campaigning, gently talking to people, as showing them why, showing other cultures. That so those are the things um, that I will do in the future. But we'll go back to my titles. Those are the titles I have. And then some regalia comes with a title. You don't have to actually have anything, as my mom says. You, If you are poor, you don't want to have any flamboyant about you, you are welcome to. It's, there is nothing that says in our oral history, you must. But not, traditionally, we wear coral beads to signify traditional royalty. And, and then um, we also, in our own thing, we can put a hat so that if we're with other chiefs, they know our title. But generally also the unwritten um, thing about the chiefs is that if I go to any kingdom in Nigeria, as a whole, as a country, and I announce I'm a chief, I'm supposed to be accorded my respect as a chief and asked to sit down or be looked after while I'm here, or, or if there are other chiefs and it's not a secret meeting or family meeting, I'm allowed to join them. Same thing if they come to my own kingdom, I'm also a, 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 supposed to accord the same respect to them. So for quick identification of, oh, this is a chief. So we try to say where we come from. So the person know, oh, that's a chief coming from this area. Or that sounds like a Yoruba name. Or the Igbos, they normally we wear their red hat. I will know, oh, that's an Igbo chief. The Alsas will put on their long hat or some, some sign about them that will tell me, oh, that, please, sir, come this way. So they don't, so most of us are wearing it now for identification. And then when it also, and some cultures, obviously some um, um, Muslim culture also do not like women opening their hair, especially if you go to their mosque. So it's actually safer sometimes that you have a hairdress on. So you don't have to be looking for, whoa, I forgot my hairdress at home, you know. So you, you want to work with other communities, you don't want to insult them. You know, they also have tradition and it's good to also try to respect that this is a tradition of this person and you want to do something with them, you have to also respect that tradition while you're visiting them. Well, this oxtail, I'm sure, probably came in those days that we had a lot of flies around, which we still do sometimes in Africa. So the chief will normally be using this as his whip to take the flies out, but then it's now become a symbol of the chief tenancy. And then if we're praying for somebody or you want to acknowledge, like especially the Yorubas, they are the we, we when we're greeting elders we kneel down and as a chief they say oh i'm not supposed to kneel down that's my, my myself but i tell them also that 
there's nothing written down that I'm not supposed to nail down. So for my elders, I nail down. It's my choice. If I want to pray and I see, I feel I want to kneel with the people, I kneel with the people. It's my choice. But some area will not allow you to do that. Some cultures in Nigeria that you're a chief now, you can't kneel for anybody, you can't do this, you can't do that. But my areas, I'm quite lucky that we are very liberal. We haven't got all those hang-ups. So still, we are not, we can wear, we can carry this, we can carry our staff of office, we can carry, I have all of the regalias, but for different occasions. Why I have them is because I want to, my, you know, most of the things I believe is affecting Africa, even our continent, is the fact that we don't have a lot of things written down. A lot of our cultures are not seen or known. Again, everything is all dying. Even my family as a whole, I know we've lost a lot of information. Even from my mom's time, I wish that this type of interview went on with my mom. So a lot of things would have been safeguarded, even with my father, a lot of things would have... And those information would have been so helpful for me right now, for me to pass on to my children and my children to pass on to their grandchildren. So I wear all these things to try and explain also to the ones coming that this is what we now use as part of our own regalia. Dancers use it for dancing, cultural dances. You hold on to it as a chief, but I think it actually was probably something to drive the flies away in the past, you know? And the other one that is a fan, I have that upstairs. And that one is also possible because it's very hot sometimes. And then you, you, you have to at some point find yourself. But when they used to have, in those days, I used to have what they called um, uh, dedicated orderlies, which some families still do. They will be fanning you with the fan, you know. But these days, um, you know, I mean, it's not necessary, but you can, I can still employ but that would be expensive for me, isn't it? To employ two guys to be giving me, <laughs> giving me air conditioners. But in some African places with the humidity at 95%, you know, that is, you really need the fan or wishing you do because all these are actually the natural bead. We have a lot of the plastic ones or the fake ones, which normally you see in the marriages. But the natural ones are very heavy and hot because it's still a stone that is alive. Is coral from the coral reef, which should not actually, I believe, we shouldn't be harvesting as much. But still, because of you pass it down, you are not supposed to to break it. It's supposed to be something that you pass down to to uh, what do you call it? You pass down to your uh, down the line, or you you don't just throw it away, or it's not something you waste. You know, then okay, it's, it has been harvested a long time ago, but we it's our duty to ensure that it stays in proper museums eventually because we should not, and if there's a child who is interested, it, it's a duty that maybe they find a way to maybe modernize it to, a lot of people are using the, the glass beads now, they are all made from China, and some of them, people are even able to make them themselves now, you know, and to signify what this is, but that is what it's all about. <laughs>